lastly, I mentioned um, uh, earlier on in this, uh, the uh, presentation about analytical cross-sectional studies. Now, we uh, undertook uh, a cross-sectional study, which was a telephone survey of the public's awareness and views on the use of dental therapists. And we, just in terms of the descriptive findings, we found that about 60% were willing uh, for dental therapists to pr provide fillings for adults. Um, they were willing um, to accept them providing fillings for children, about half of them were, and about 40% of them were uh, willing to accept paying the same for treatment if it was provided by a dental therapist or a dentist. So we started to think, well, I wonder what might predict these views. And we, so we started to look at um, what factors might influence whether you find dental therapists acceptable in providing certain treatments or in certain aspects, or whether you didn't. And we found that after doing a, something called logistic regression, that we found that if you were male, younger, and had a perceived need for treatment, you were more likely to find a dental therapist um, acceptable in providing treatment for adults than you were if you um, had received some of your care pri on a private contract. Similarly, um, if you were younger, you were more likely to find it acceptable for a dental therapist for finding, uh, providing a filling for a child, but if, again, if you had uh, private treatment, you were less likely to find it acceptable. And lastly, um, why this should be the case, I don't know, but if you're male, you'll be more willing to pay the same for treatment um, provided by a dental therapist um, or a dentist, whereas um, otherwise you are less likely. Um, to find it acceptable. So this is just an example of a cross-sectional study which largely is descriptive in nature. If you collect potential confounding factors or other variables, you can then do analysis using a statistical technique called logistic regression. All right, and uh, I said finally before, but this really is finally. We're just basically going to cover now some uh, uh, briefly something called uh, other quasi-experimental studies. And these include non-randomised non controlled trials, controlled before and after studies, and lastly, interrupted time series. Okay, so non-randomised controlled trials are essentially the same as randomised controlled trials, but the allocation is non-randomised. And of course, as a consequence, there is a greater risk of bias. They are rarely done now, um, largely because all types of uh, controlled trials are expensive, they tend to require some uh, form of uh, grant or funding, and most funding bodies now, unless there's a very, very good reason, would not fund a non-randomised control trial. Um, so as I say, they're very rarely done. Normally, uh, if they are done now, it's because there's no ability to randomise. Um, but there are other start, um, types of study design, which I'll go on to in a few moments, which are, are done more frequently than a non-randomised control trial in those situations. One of those types of study is something called a controlled before and after study. So in these cases, the allocation uh, to either control or the intervention group is not made by the investigators. It might be sort of a natural experiment, something which is happening naturally. The outcomes are measured in, in, uh, in the intervention and control group before and after the intervention is introduced. But the problem with these uh, studies is there is a high risk of bias. Um, often un unidentified differences between the groups can cause that bias and so they are tricky. Examples of these um, are, uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, some of the studies looking into the impact of fluoride or fluoridation of the water supply and caries were cohort studies but a lot of them were controlled before and after studies where uh, in a way it was like a natural experiment. You introduce a fluoride, um, a fluoridation scheme, you would which is the intervention, you would look at caries before and after in the area where there's, a, um, there's been fluoridation of the water supply and compare it to another area where there hasn't been fluoridation of the water supply and then look at the difference. Now, it, this, that, this is an example where looking at the two different areas and the difference between them in terms of socioeconomic profile, ethnicity, age differences would be critical in, uh, in considering how that might influence the findings. If you don't have true randomization and a balance of groups, uh, a balance in the two groups, then there's always a risk that any difference you identify could be uh, 
more to do with the difference between the two groups, the intervention and control group, rather than the intervention itself. And lastly, there's something called interrupted time series designs. And these are useful when randomization or, or a control group is, uh, well, both are impractical. And what you need to do is uh, take multiple data points um, before and after the intervention, and then uh, you measure it against the pre-intervention trend. So basically, you use a, a specific statistical um, approach, which is beyond uh, today's session. Um, the problem is there's no way to assess the impact of concurrent events on the outcome of interest. So ex an example of this would be if you were looking at the impact of a new dental contract, so on prescribing. So before the, in, in, uh, the introduction of a new contract, you may say, for example, look at the number of fissure sealants that are being provided or the number of uh, uh, amalgam restorations or prescriptions, whatever. You introduce the new dental contract and you'd probably want to take a number of data points to make sure that it's representative of the old contract. You then introduce a new dental contract across the country. By definition, you therefore don't have a control group. You then look after a period of time, once the new contract has been introduced, you then start taking some more measurements. So you may look again at fissure sealant pr uh, prescription, number of amalgam restorations being provided, etc. And you would, as I say, you'd look at the difference between the two. Now what you can't say uh, in, in, these, in these studies is what impact other things may have had on prescribing. So there might have been, if it's a long period of time, there might have been significant changes, for example, in the teaching of dental students. There could be a difference in the, in the ratio of dental students to dental therapists. Lots of things that could impact on it. Improvements of oral health that could have been going on concurrently. So that's why there is risk of bias in these studies. Finally, um, I, there was one thing I wanted to mention, which I'll talk about, which I've realised that I haven't mentioned earlier on, which is in relation to controls with case control studies. The example we gave earlier was um, uh, a, the, the Dahl and Hill study. And I mentioned that a control in a case control study should be uh, as representative pos as possible in terms of the exposure as, uh, as, as the population from which they're drawn. So in the Dolan Hill study, they looked at patients in hospital who had lung cancer. And they looked at, as a controls, with people who were in hospital who didn't have lung cancer. Now, people in hospital, at that point, they didn't know that smoking was associated with many other diseases. So as a consequence, the, the controls in the hospital actually were not representative of the population as a whole because if you're in hospital full stop, you're more likely to be, an uh, to be a smoker. So in that situation, they actually underestimated the link between smoking and lung cancer because smoking was higher in terms of prevalence in their controls than you would normally expect if you just had a, a, a random sample of the population outside of hospital. So I just wanted to cover that. And this relates to the final task. So, for your final test, I would like you to consider setting up a case control study to test the hypothesis that smoking causes oral cancer. Issues to, be, to consider, first of all, how would you define a case? How are you going to collect the data from these cases and how might you select the controls? Thanks very much. <laughs>